In this video, we delve into the power and lethality of the 50 caliber sniper rifle. Join us as we explore just how deadly this weapon can be and uncover the impact it has on the battlefield. From its incredible range to its devastating stopping power, we break down the facts surrounding this iconic firearm. Whether you're a firearms enthusiast or simply curious about the capabilities of such a weapon, this video will provide you with a comprehensive look at the 50 caliber sniper rifle. Watch now to uncover the truth behind its reputation for being one of the most lethal firearms in existence. Bullseye. We have all heard of the legendary .50 caliber ammunition, the kind used by some machine guns and sniper rifles to devastate the enemy. But do you really know how lethal this ammunition is? To understand clearly, we need to delve a bit into ballistics and basic human biology. The idea of this video is to help you understand the power of this ammunition in the simplest way and to dispel some myths that exist about it. The .50 caliber is used today by very advanced weapons but it has existed for over a century and has endured since John Moses Browning created it for the first time in 1918 for the M2 Browning machine gun. The mechanical reliability of the weapon and the ballistics of the projectile remain exactly what a soldier needs today to quickly take down a large number of enemies and light vehicles at long distances. The .50 caliber ammunition has a devastating combination of range and power. It can pierce bulletproof vests like a knife through hot butter, shoot down helicopters in flight, take out armored vehicles, fell trees, destroy radar antennas, and anything else you can imagine at a distance of 10 football fields. But let's get to the point. How does a .50 caliber bullet affect the human body? You see, getting into ballistics, there are three main effects of a metallic bullet hitting a human that are likely to cause serious injury or death. First, there's laceration and crushing by the bullet passing through flesh. Then there's cavitation, which has two parts. The first cavity is permanent, meaning the open space left by the previously mentioned laceration. But there is a second, temporary cavity. As the projectile moves through the body, it crushes flesh and rapidly pushes it outward. The flesh keeps its momentum for a fraction of a second, moving away from the bullet's path. The flesh can tear and cells can burst as the tissue expands outward and then retracts. And finally, there is the shockwave. The surrounding flesh is obviously compressed as the cavity expands, and this is where the shockwave begins. The cavity pushes outward, compressing the flesh, and the energy in the compressed flesh continues traveling outward until it dissipates. This can also cause limb separation and tears, basically tearing off an arm or a leg from a person. This is an absolute reality. For example, when the M2 machine gun fires bullets and they hit a target, they usually pass through with much of their kinetic energy remaining in the exiting projectile. But only 20% of the bullet's energy will harm the human the rest will exit until it hits something else. If the target's flesh deforms very quickly, it can sometimes compress or displace nerves, thus destroying their connections and potentially causing a concussion. On the other hand, if the projectile hits a bone, the result is much worse. All projectiles transfer some of their energy to a bone if they hit it. A .50 caliber can cause the bone to explode into multiple fragments that fly at the speed of a low-velocity bullet practically activating a fragmentation grenade inside you. The harder the bone hit, the more energy is imparted to the skeleton before the bone breaks. In very hard bones like the hip cavity, the enormous projectile can leave most of its energy in the bone and the flesh connected to it. There is really no way to survive a .50 caliber bullet hitting a hard, well-connected bone. In fact, a .50 caliber projectile hits with so much energy that it would probably kill you even if a bulletproof vest could somehow stop it. The impact on the armor plate hitting the rib cage would be like getting hit by Thor's hammer. The energy would crush your organs so brutally that it would rupture your blood vessels and arteries. There's no laceration and cavitation in the body, but there's so much crushing and shockwave that it wouldn't matter at all. That said, an M2 Browning machine gun is very heavy, almost impossible to operate individually without some mount. However, for decades the .50 caliber has been adapted into sniper rifles that can be perfectly well deployed by a single individual, automatically giving them the ability to discreetly engage a target at distances of over 1.5 kilometers, which is very attractive from a tactical standpoint. Although the .50 caliber sometimes seems exaggerated, 
it's hard to imagine a projectile that at distances of over 2 kilometers still has more kinetic energy than a .44 Magnum and also has unsurpassed penetration. An experienced sniper using a Barrett M82 sniper rifle has the option to hit a long-range target at 1,800 meters, penetrate 5 centimeters of solid concrete at a distance of 200 meters, or destroy a range of personnel and material targets at other distances. The balance between extremely long-range and massive striking power is enhanced when using specially designed ammunition like armor-piercing and even armor-piercing incendiary rounds. But let's use some math and physics to help us here. A 180-grain bullet fired from a .308 traveling at 853 meters per second will have 4,247 joules of energy on impact. The .50 caliber, by comparison, uses a 700-grain bullet traveling 907 meters per second and will have 18,942 joules of energy on impact. That's almost 4.5 times more energy in the .50 caliber bullet which is why it devastates any organic body it hits. A direct hit to the head would be like hitting a melon with a hammer if you excuse the graphic description, but that's the reality. Now, a myth I want to dispel about the .50 caliber is the one that says the .50 will rip the skin and cause damage even if it just passes near the target without hitting it. This is completely false. The only way a bullet can cause damage is by hitting the target directly. The lack of destructive shockwave is clearly evident when shooting at paper targets. The holes in the paper are the size of the caliber and no additional damage is visible on the target. In summary, a .50 caliber projectile does create a small shockwave when breaking the sound barrier, but it does not generate enough force for its mere passage through the air to affect a human in any way. Another common myth is that the .50 caliber can split a man in two. False. Although the .50 can cause terrible wounds and even limb separation as we have already mentioned, it cannot cut a grown man in half. In fact, one of the few documented cases of someone surviving a direct hit from a .50 caliber is that of Corporal Garrett Foster who, in February 2015, was shot in the stomach by a .50 in Baghdad, Iraq. At the time of the shot, his intestines even came out of his body. He subsequently underwent about 45 operations, lost his coccyx, and suffered damage to his large and small intestines. He was even told he would never walk again. Foster not only survived the wound but stood up and walked two years after being shot. In an interview, Foster said the following, They didn't know how to put me back together because the doctors had never seen anyone be shot by a .50 caliber and survive. The hole in my back was enormous, but everything they did somehow worked. Another even more astonishing case was that of Charles Beckwith, none other than the founder of the U.S. Delta Force, one of the most secretive and lethal special forces units on the planet. During the Vietnam War, Beckwith was shot in the abdomen with a .50 caliber bullet and it hit a vital blood vessel, but Charlie just had his guts pushed back in and was taped up, basically left for dead. But death didn't come for Beckwith, and he not only recovered but continued his military career. After this, he fought in a series of battles, including the Tet Offensive in 1968. This story is little known, but Charles Lewis was truly a Terminator. Another thing you should know is that most of the longest kills recorded by snipers in history have been made using .50 caliber ammunition. Canadian Army Corporal Rob Furlong shot a Taliban combatant at 2,657 meters with a Macmillan TAC-50 rifle during the 2012 Afghanistan campaign. And going further back, in 1967, U.S. Marine sniper and legend Carlos Hathkick set a long-distance kill record at 2,090 meters with a .50 caliber ammunition fired from a Browning M2 machine gun equipped with a telescopic sight. It is a completely surreal weapon. Of course, the best way to understand the power of this bullet is to try it personally. I have done it many times with Barrett rifles and it is simply impressive. The first moments after pulling the trigger is what really sets the .50 caliber apart from other weapons. You can feel the force of the huge bullet leaving the barrel, forcing a large volume of gases out of both sides of the muzzle brake, which is appreciated because it drastically reduces recoil. We invite you to share your opinion on how this hypothetical event could have affected the outcome of the war. Leave us your comments and subscribe for more historical analyses. Thank you for following us to the end. If you are new to our channel, subscribe and follow our social networks in the description.